It might not look like it from this background, but welcome to Tanzania. So this is a place that has been on Brie and I's bucket list forever, I think for her since she was three years old and we were so stoked to be here. It was a long nine hour flight from Amsterdam, but we made it. We are staying in this accommodation. <laughs> uh, the bed was actually like a concrete mattress, it almost felt like, but it was actually incredibly comfortable. We slept really well, um, although we didn't get a flight hour, so I might feel a little groggy at the moment. We are about to go downstairs to meet our guide for the day and for the rest of the trip. He's with us the entire time, so super excited. Let's get a move on. So we just stopped to go to an ATM because I want some cash to tip and we find out we get this entire vehicle. It is six passengers as well as two people up front all to ourselves for the entire week. We're super stoked and our guide seems awesome so far. So we're going to be headed to our first sightseeing spot today and it's called Tarangir. And we're hoping to see elephants and wildebeest. And for me, the one thing that I need to see on this trip, so fingers crossed for it, is a hippo. So we'll see. I don't think this is the place for hippo, but wildebeest, zebra, definitely some lion. Super excited. Welcome to Rangiri National Park. So the park has 2,850 square kilometers. First animal sighting. I really wish our camera would do this justice, but um, I think it would take like the $10,000 lens to do it justice, <laughs> and we just didn't have that in the budget. It seems like now everywhere you look, there's always an animal. So we're at this watering hole and they're just animals everywhere and that's one of the reasons that we decided to come in the dry season is because we just have to group around these little areas. Did not think we were going to see a predator today. We just spotted our first elephant. <laughs> Excited! That's the face of somebody who's about to cross something off their bucket list. This is probably one of the ones we are most excited to see. And they're even more beautiful in person than I would have thought. So we just stopped at a baobab and their hollow inside as well. He was just telling us that when the elephants eat the bark, sometimes the holes get kind of carved out. You can go inside the trees and it's actually a common place where they find poachers hiding, although not so much anymore. So we just finished up eating at this cute little picnic spot overlooking this river. We had like a little homemade sandwich, a chicken wing. An egg, chocolate. Typical, just easy picnic food. Easy to store, easy to eat. And now we're gonna check out this view. And there are monkeys all over this place that are stealing people's food. And it is actually quite hilarious to watch. Although I'd be pretty upset because I was pretty hungry by the time we got to eat. So we finally got to our first day, which is a lodge kind of like up on a hill. And I cannot believe the luck that we're having, but we are the only guests to stay here, which means that we got the best room with the best view. And it is the best room with the best view. It's not just the bedroom though that has an amazing view. One of the things he was very keen to point out, and I'm glad he did, is what he calls the loo with a view. Now that's probably the best one I've ever seen. The other ablutions also come with good views. So we've come outside. And look at that shower. Bathtub, whatever. 
did an amazing job of wrapping up last night and that's because we were so tired. We just went and grabbed dinner, which had an amazing view. We were the only people at this resort. So we just sat there and ate with the guide and talked to the staff, which was a really cool experience. And now we have to go grab breakfast. It's about 7.30 in the morning. We slept in a little bit and I feel exhausted still. I definitely have not caught up on my sleep yet. And uh, these walls behind me are mesh, so you hear absolutely everything that's going on. So we woke up to hyenas howling at night. Uh, the birds this morning were incredibly loud. Yeah, also, uh, like Jeff said, we did a poor job of wrapping up, but we forgot to mention that we have two things. We have a walkie-talkie because we're so far from the main building and the rest of the camp. But also we have a security guard from the Maasai that kind of follows us around. And at first we weren't really sure why like we, we thought maybe like poachers or people being in here that weren't supposed to be but after last night and hearing the hyenas when we were sleeping we now know why there's a security guard following us around and they have their sticks and they have their flashlights and it's a very interesting experience but breakfast time thank you So we just entered the park for Lake Manata, which is where we're supposed to see a bunch of baboons. And when we were in the entrance park, we went to the bathroom. The baboons were actually all over and they were jumping in the tops of vehicles that had the tops open and like stealing people's stuff. So they're very clever. So you can already see the difference in this park versus the one that we did yesterday. It's a lot more covered, a lot more shady and cool, but it's much harder to see the animals. So outside of the baboons here, uh, our guide told us that there are a lot of lions, but they're tree lions. And because there's so many trees, you're gonna have to look up a little bit more than on the ground versus yesterday. Still no luck finding anything. so funny because on the way down the front desk people were like the housekeepers will get the bags and at first Jeff and I were like mm, maybe we should get them but we saw the housekeepers and I was like I'm just gonna let you do your thing. <laughs> Strongest housekeepers I've ever seen. That lady's neck she could be an Olympian. Good morning from our tented lodge in Tanzania. This is day three for us so today we've got a Long, long driving day. We're heading to Nagarongo Crater, which is supposed to be one of the best places to do safaris in Tanzania. It's high up elevation, I think 2,000 meters. Hopefully that sounds right. And you're in a crater, so the animals are basically trapped there. So it's great for game viewing. We're super excited. Fingers crossed for a rhino today. 
but first we got to grab some breakfast. So we typically don't really film breakfast because, well, we're sharing it with our guide most of the time and it makes it a little awkward, but also there's just not much to film. This is a budget safari, so it's usually just like a cold buffet and sometimes they have eggs and today they had porridge, which was a huge win. But um, I did want to say that it gets incredibly cold in Tanzania at night, so much so that they bring us these hot water bottles and it makes all the difference because it is seriously freezing. Another thing I wanted to point out is that you usually have like a flashlight in your room, but they didn't give us one for some reason here and it's pitch black. We got so lucky having one of our headlamps with us. So if you come and do this, make sure you bring one. Wheel covers on. Wow. <laughs> just don't imagine all the sand getting everywhere. I mean, it's Bring, on me every night. Dust so. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. All right, small correction to what I said earlier. We are not going to Ngorongoro Crater today. We are actually just going straight to the Northern Serengeti. While most people do Gorongoro Crater, we do not because we are doing two days in the Serengeti. So we're driving straight to the northernmost camp that we can get to. And then we're gonna spend the whole full day tomorrow really exploring. So. Today's just long driving day, nothing too cool, although he did say we should probably see some animals because we are still driving through the Serengeti. It's just not uh, our main stop. We're going straight to the camp. And right now we're at a little tourist police checkpoint. So you only do it once while you're on the road, check in, and then you're just good to go. Then we just keep driving. So it's a good time so far. One of the issues is you eat these big breakfasts early in the morning and then you basically get your intestines rattled around quite heavily. So. It's like this constant battle of how much do I eat, how much coffee do I drink, and then how long is it until the nearest bathroom, but I think we're doing a good job so far of balancing it out. We are getting ready to enter the park and it is so busy here, it's insane. So we do our best to try to talk to the camera while we're in the car, but two things you should note here. It is incredibly loud in these SUVs. You can't really even hear each other, let alone try to talk to a camera. So if it doesn't pick up that well, I'm so sorry. And also we have a driver and it's a little awkward when he tells us a fun fact and then we retell it to the camera because we always get this side eye of like, what are you doing? And it just makes it a little awkward, but we're doing our best. So you can see we're at like a little rest stop just using the restroom and the scenery has changed completely, which is just crazy. It's like everywhere you go, it's just slightly different. So we're getting closer to the Serengeti, which we're super stoked for. It is extremely dusty, so I'm trying to keep the camera out of the, the sand blasting that's happening to my face right now. And this little spot is actually where they found like prehistoric human skulls. So they actually have fossilized footprints here too, proving that we were bipedal at least 3.6 million years ago, which is pretty cool. So we've got our first lion spotting on the Serengeti. And there are two female lions and a little baby on this rock. I'm gonna try and capture them, but there are quite a few Jeeps in front of us. So we'll see what we can do. So there's already one fight between a lion trying to encroach on another one's territory and their kill. Get him, get him! <laughs> ah! And now we see like three males all around us coming together. We have no idea what's gonna happen. It's gonna be crazy. who protects his territory is now back with the female and the younger male looks like he's about to cross the road to meet up. Jumped on the kill. So it is now 4.05 p.m. We left at 8 a.m. this morning. We have been driving literally all day long. 
and I think we're still maybe like two hours out from our final destination so once you get into the Serengeti which is where we are we're headed to the Serengeti North Park and that's where our accommodation is but it's taking forever to get there it's a long bumpy drive right now we are literally just leaving the central Serengeti I don't know if you can see maybe me probably not on me because of the clothing or the color of my clothing, but literally everything is covered in dust in here. The camera, me, the pockets, the water bottles, the seats, the cushions, the shoes, my nose. I mean, just, it's everywhere. It's awful, it's a really gross feeling. And it's, I'm sure, not good for my lung health in the long term, but it's been worth it today. Yeah, if you ever come and do this little trek, make sure you bring a buff because this thing is a lifesaver. We saw a bunch of people coming into the park that had masks on, and we weren't really sure what they were for, but it makes perfect sense now. That was a long day of driving, but we made it to our northern camp. We're quite tired. Very looking forward to the shower, I think. Got greeted by some really beautiful dancing and delicious watermelon juice. And now we're off to our tent. And we are in the middle of the park at the moment. They say wild animals can just walk between the tents all night, so we're not allowed to walk alone. Look at the state of our bags. <laughs> Good morning from the middle of the Serengeti. It is day four of our African safari, and I'm gonna call the day before yesterday the day of the elephants, yesterday the day of the lions, and today hopefully the day of the wildebeest migration, which is the entire reason we came here at this time. Last night at the camp was a very interesting one, probably the roughest night's sleep because the tent is so loud, and there are many, many insects in here, and I felt like with every single movement of our tent side, I was using our headlamp to see what it was, so it was a very interesting stay, but Jeff slept well, so we got that going for us. Today we're up probably our earliest. It's about 6.10 right now because we're going to try to get on the road at about 7 a.m. and then head out to see if we can see the wildebeest crossing the river. Lunches. So we're on the move. It's about 9 a.m. We've been driving for about two hours trying to find the place where the wildebeest are going to cross. So they only cross in a few locations and you don't know when they're going to do it. So it requires a lot of patience. And you can see all the guides kind of jostling for the best spots or where they think they're going to cross. So we pulled up to a couple where we've just sat for a little bit and you can't go too close because it scares the wildebeest. So you just kind of sit and wait about 50 meters, 100 meters back. And then when you see them start to cross, because at that point they're not going to stop, then you get closer and that's when you get the good footage. So we're just sitting at a place. We moved on to another one or we're currently on the move to another one and we are just flying around <laughs> this area at the moment we're just pulling up to a spot and i think they are crossing they're crossing we can see it from here this is crazy our driver's a monster So there's over 2 million wildebeest crossing. It's not all on the same day, it's throughout the month of August, but I'm glad we got to see a piece of it. I'm sure everyone's seen a nature show where the crocs grab the unsuspecting wildebeest or zebra, but unfortunately we haven't seen any today. So, fingers crossed. I know it's kind of a morbid thing to think about, but it's the circle of life. So no crocs yet, but we're on the move. We're gonna start to look for them, but it's kind of a cloudy morning right now. So we're waiting for the sun to come out and then that's when the crocs will come out and then get their lunch. These are all the ones that just made it across. So we saw the second migration and it was phenomenal. And we actually just, even though we paused for lunch, we saw our fourth, third and fourth leopard. You see that? Another one behind? Yep, Here. yep. Oh. <sighs> Mother and the baby. Wow, they're beautiful. Oh. Which are incredibly rare and we saw it. We either think it was like a potential couple mating or it was a mom and her baby. And now, 
If the day couldn't get any better, we just crossed into Kenya and we are in the Maasai Mara. Super, super cool bucket list stuff. So we're not uh, country counters, but I think we're gonna count this one. We don't even know what we're looking for. <laughs> so we found what we were looking for. We found two lionesses just hiding out in the grass, which is super cool. No rhino, but the day is not over and we still have a few more days in Tanzania. So we just watched an amazing sunset and then we realized that we had not actually shown you our accommodations for this stay. So we're gonna do a quick little tour. Front door, luggage storage, bed one, bed two, sink and mirror, shower, toilet, spider. So this is our last day here. This is the longest day that we had throughout the entire safari, which was two nights. And we're looking forward to the next two because they're supposed to be a little more elevated. Wrapping up today though, we were walking up to the tent and talking to the camera and we found out that we didn't have any audio, which is unfortunate because we have said that this was one of the most magical days on our safari. If you're thinking about coming to Africa for any reason, definitely do it. But if it's for an African safari in Tanzania or Kenya, make it a priority because the wildebeest crossing was incredible. I mean, you watch it on these nature shows Shows and it looks you know great but when you see it in person it's just mind-blowing but now we're gonna head over to dinner and they actually put on a little show for us so we're gonna try to get some footage of that <laughs> Morning from day four or maybe five of our African safari. We're not really sure, but we lost count. We left our camp in the North Serengeti, which by the way is so impressive because they move it every single year and it takes about a month to build. So it's in a different location every year depending upon where the wildebeest migration is. Now we're headed to Central Serengeti for some more animal viewing and hopefully we can see some, I don't even know. What do you want to see today? Rhino baby. Are they in the central? I think they're Serengeti and Gorongoro, I think. Okay, well, hopefully we see Rhino. Let's recap. This morning's been good, but for the most part, pretty uneventful. We were able to see lions, a turtle, which was very neat, elephants, uh, but for the most part, like not too many of the animals that we wanted to see. Jeff and I are feeling pretty tired because these are very long days sitting in the car. We're in this car like 95% of the time. We just stopped for lunch and there's like a hundred hippos right next to our little picnic spot. They smell terrible, but they're super cute and they also like poop on each other's faces. It's very interesting. Now we're finishing up trying to get to Central Serengeti and I'm hoping that we see some more stuff. So we have two things that we really wanna see. 
Rhino. We brought it up several times in this video. Sorry, I'm eating a candy at the same time. A rhino we really want to see, but they're solitary animals, so they're harder to see because you can't spot a lot of them. And also they're almost extinct. And the second is to see a hunt. Serengeti is the Maasai word for endless plains, and it shows today, for example. Good morning from the middle of the central Serengeti Plains. So right outside of this tent flap is just a view of this endless expanse. We are on our last safari day. So today we're going to Gorongoro Crater, which has been a personal all-time bucket list of mine. It's supposed to be one of the few places in the world where you can see all of the big five in one day. Rhino, we're coming for you. Before we get going, we just want to give you a very quick tour of this amazing tent that we stayed in last night. Bed, bed, bed. Chair, table, trunk, brie, toilet, Shower, view. We've made it to the crater. We have to go down 600 meters to get to the bottom and start game viewing. Big five, we did it. We got the big five. So we just spotted our second rhino today, but once again, he is much too far to take a photo or get him on camera, but it counts. We've seen the big five now. Lunch time with our little picnic boxes. We can't eat outside because there are mean birds that steal our precious food. We have made it to our final stay and it is beautiful. Who, me? <laughs> Here's our entryway. Come around the corner to our bedroom. We have a little sitting table here. And there's also this large ceiling. It's actually pretty deep. I don't know if you can tell on camera, but it's really neat. And then you come around the side here and this is the bathroom. Here's the shower, toilet sink and mirror. There's also a really beautiful pool, though I don't know if we're gonna get in it because we are so tired and we have to clean up all of the dust off of all of our stuff because we're headed to the airport tomorrow. Mm -hmm. 